So, in the skeptic community, I am prescribing you all today in my eminent non-existent PhD using ownshrink.com itself to help provide me with this diagnosis. Skeptic community, I have your answer because I think some of you are skeptopaths. Yes, skeptopaths. Now, let's be serious for a moment. This has been provided to me by, well, after a long <laughs> and needless to say ponage of an anti-vaxxer who after presenting uh, presenting a, sci a scientific paper which they believed supported their case when I looked at it merely reading the actual um, conclusion of the article doesn't support their case and yet they claim it somehow did so immediately I was called a skeptopath. Now, what is a skeptopath and how did this come about? Well, believe it or not, this has been around uh, on the internet for quite a while. A couple of years ago, I was involved with a, with a guy who was claiming that psychic phenomena and psychics and ghosts do exist. I'm like, okay, where's your proof? And he was sending me all this stuff and I'm just like, I'm sorry, but none of what you're saying is well the article the things that you're providing me first of all aren't credible um you once linked me to a guy who claimed that he could glow in the dark <laughs> and now you're now you're calling me a skeptopath because i am doubting your claims of this psychic phenomena well i basically said to him look if you think psychic phenomena exist and you can, because he said he can prove that it exists. Well, I said, go and do the James Randi experiment. Win that, you know, uh, $10,000, I think it is, or something he's got going. So, immediately said, oh, well, you know, you just won't accept it because you're a skeptopath. I went, what? <laughs> so, how can you tell, then, if you're a skeptopath? Because I've been told this by him, and now this anti-vaxxer. So... These are the points, according to ownshrink.com, a link he sent to me, the anti-vaxxer, that apparently makes me a skeptopath. So, skeptopaths have a tendency to deny rather than doubt. Have double standards in the application of criticism. Make judgments without full inquiry. Have a tendency to discredit rather than investigate. Use ridicule or attacks in lieu of arguments label their proponents progenitively, present insufficient evidence of proof, assume criticism requires no burden of proof, make unsubstantiated counterclaims, and make counterclaims based on plausibility rather than empirical evidence. Suggest that unconvincing evidence is grounds for dismissing it. Well, that one at the bottom pretty much sums it up. If you've got unconvincing evidence, then I have every right to basically um, dismiss it. Now, I'm sure a lot of people heard those and just went, what? That's, that's ridiculous. Because you've got to understand where this is coming from. This is the last bastion of people who believe in ghosts, uh, believe in psychics. At least that's where the realm I thought the people actually believed this. But now we've got anti-vaxxers coming forward and saying, oh, you don't believe my evidence, all this you know, evidence that I have? Well, I'm sorry, but the science is not with you on that. So, <laughs> and I was going to go deep in just to debunking these, these, you know, these arguments, but they're ridiculous. I mean... Present insufficient evidence of proof. Oh, sorry. Present insufficient evidence or proof. Depends what you're talking about. Because if you're talking like ghosts exist, I can't very well point you to a, a scientific article saying ghosts don't exist because there are no scientific articles or journals or peer-reviewed studies that, you know, prove ghosts don't exist. But when you think that I was sent to this by an anti-vaxxer, there are 
hundreds. In fact, I can think of two papers right now, a Danish one and one from the UK, that prove that vaccines are safe and there's no link to autism. Yet despite that, they claim, oh, it does cause it. But this, you know, immunologists and you know experts in autism don't agree with you. And you've been told numerous times why you are wrong and how you are wrong, but you won't accept the answers. So this is their last bastion. They have to turn around and just go, oh, it's okay, he's a skeptopath. Never, never had any chance to begin with. And that's where we're left with. So I'll leave a link below because if you want a real good laugh, you can also look up what their what makes a pseudo skeptic and what makes a true skeptic um which they are they are there's some of those that are just flat out hilarious but just the skeptopath itself making up a psychological or disorder to label people with it because they don't like the fact that they can't present evidence of their claims to be true. That is the level these people have sunk to and it is quite frankly laughable. It really, really is.